Hello, everyone. Welcome to back to the Brain Health Online Summit Training Series. I am Amy Zalmer from Faces of TBI, and I received a TBI after falling on the ice in February of 2014. And Dr. Jeremy Schmo from Minnesota Functional Neurology, together we saw a need in the brain injury community for more training and education on alternative healthcare methods and modalities for those still suffering from the lingering effects of a brain injury. So each weekday during the month of March, you are going to hear from a presenter who will share their experience either working with brain injury patients or their own real life experience of living with a brain injury. So today I am here with Diane Henshaw and Diane worked in the health insurance profession for over 14 years up until the time she suffered a traumatic brain injury while working in the backyard. She is concerned the patients are often left on their own to seek appropriate care for their situation. She's supported by her loving husband and three daughters and lives in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. So I'm so happy to have you here, Diane, to share you. your story and give everybody, a, you know, a little more insight into what it's like living with a brain injury and navigating these incredibly murky waters. <laughs> sure. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you for asking me to be a part of the summit and sharing my story. Um, and I want to acknowledge that, Amy, because of the work that you do, your advocacy and awareness, it led me to um, Dr. Schmo at um, MFNC. And that's where, that was the turning point for me where I really started to feel like I was on the right path to healing. Mm -hmm. So thank you. You're the one who bring me there. I really appreciate it. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So, Diane. Yeah. You know, um, I'm just going to let you kind of jump in. I'd love for you to start by sharing your story and how you got injured and then kind of path that that led you down. Yes, yeah, sure. Well, as you mentioned, um, I'm married with a, a husband and three adult daughters and a son-in-law. I live in Eden Prairie. Um, on April 26, 2016, I was outside doing some yard work, um, and we had a sunroom with a four and a half foot clearance underneath. Um, I had a hat on to protect myself from the sun and went to um, grab some weeds underneath the sunroom, totally misjudged the distance and smacked my left side of my head right on that corner where the wall and kind of the floor meet. Um, heard a sharp crack. My I whipped to the right side over my shoulder, um, didn't knock myself out, but felt pretty lousy, needless to say, and had a really nasty headache. Went in, iced my head, um, and then continued to do yard work. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, the next day I woke up and wasn't feeling well at all. It, it, it just didn't feel right. Headache, was it, it just became worse, but it was that I'm not feeling right. Went to urgent care. My daughter actually drive me, uh, drove me and, you know, heard, okay, you have a concussion. It'll take two weeks. You'll be fine. Rest, et cetera, et cetera. Um, through the course of that week, um, even though I worked remotely that week because I felt I needed to rest constantly and in between meetings, um, et cetera, I started not I started feeling worse, not right. I had a left eyebrow droop, which was weird. Um, my processing, visual processing was off. I just felt like I was going downhill. So mm -hmm. went through of seeing my primary care doctor who sent me to a neurologist. I had, you know, CT scan, MRI, et cetera. Still concussion, you'll get better, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that continued the probably all too familiar story that we TBI folks have, where you see doctor after doctor and trying to find out answers. Um, you know, I was developing over the course of time a chronic daily headache, which I still have to this day. Um, the headache was becomes migraine-like. Um, it's triggered by just simple, Simple um, stimulation, whether it be you know lights or too much, um, you know, riding in a car with traffic coming at you. I 
personally took myself off the road from driving because I knew I would be unsafe. My reflexes weren't there and I was in panic mode just being a passenger, mm -hmm. um, which my husband just loves. <laughs> so, um, you know, that along with like auditory processing issues, um, not, not being able to multitask, um, it, it just, it just spiraled downhill. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I kept seeing doctor after doctor, um, many neurologists, um, went on many different kinds of medication. And the doctors, although well-meaning, I know they were, um, you know, it was just cha changing up the medication to address the headache, um, not necessarily all the other symptoms. So, and during that time too, oh, go ahead. I was just going to ask, what medications were they giving you? Was it just for the headache or was it other stuff? It was, I'm always intrigued yeah. when people say that the doctors put them on medication. It's like, what could you possibly be giving them? Right. No, um, I, I went on Imitrex. I mean, I went on medications for preventive. My, it was migraine type medications. And I, I honestly don't. And you weren't them. actually truly having migraines. You were having... It, Concussion. And I always question that because it's like, well, I have this headache, but all these other symptoms where mm -hmm. I can't function. Um, and so, yeah, the do I mean, I even went on medication. I, I ended up having um, DHE injections and IV therapy to try to help this headache because it was so debilitating. And the only thing mm -hmm. that would help me was lying flat down. Well, you can't really live your life doing that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it was it just being able to manage on a day-to-day -day basis this headache. But once again, as I said, I had all these other symptoms. Um, and during the first three months, I was in this concussive fog where I just didn't have the ability to really communicate everything or, or ask questions as I could write, as I can right now, because of this brain fog. But when I came out of it in August, I went to my doctor. I was at a headache clinic at the time. I was armed with my questions and, you know, how come I'm not better? And their response was, well, we, we don't handle the rest of that stuff here. Boom. I was on my own. Um, I did get a referral from them to go to Mayo um, because there was a question of a cerebrospinal fluid leak. And, you know, that could have caused this orthostatic mm -hmm. headache. So ended up going to Mayo um, later on in November. At Mayo, I ended up going to, um, after being tested, I went through scans, spinal tap, et cetera. No CSF leak, um, but I was then referred to the headache clinic in which they introduced me to the Mo uh, Botox migraine regimen, mm -hmm. where you get injections about 25 shots in the head and shoulders every three months um, and did that for about a year, which only helped a little until the Botox wore off at about eight weeks and you had this raging headache with your nerves firing up in the middle of the night even um, and had to manage that until your next set of injections. So really troublesome and still not getting answers. Um, it, you know, it's very frustrating. So the biggest challenge I thought it was, am I seeing the right doctor? Mm -hmm. um, I went to over 30 providers, rehabilitation specialists, um, neurologists, neuropsychologists, neurooptometrists, um, and still didn't have any answers. And one of the things I wanna share, and I have this um, because I um, am on disability from having worked and having disability insurance, is I have my notebook of all my medical records. That's amazing. It, it just, you know, and, and in reviewing this information, all of my symptoms were peppered throughout the medical notes of you know the visual issues the auditory issues etc um, also just because i'm curious was wanted to see what those appointments amounted to the scans the examinations etc and 
was able to come up with this number from the insurance website of over $111,000 of billed claims to the insurance company for all of these appointments. So, 111,000. And, and how long of a time frame is that? About a year and a half? That was, um, yeah, that was about a year and a half. It was April from my uh, date of injury until December 2017. Um, December 2017 was truly my turning point. And when I reached out to Dr. Jeremy Schmo, and um, who's a functional neurologist, as you know, and you are one of his patients as well, um, because I was looking for a different approach, a holistic approach, because I still didn't have any answers. None of the yeah. doctors I saw gave me answers as to what was going on with me and how I was going to heal. Um, even though I made very, you know, little bits and pieces of progress, I, I was nowhere close to mm -hmm. even what I am now. So I made an appointment with Dr. Schmo. Um, I was still, I have to admit and told him so, still somewhat skeptical because I had seen so many other providers. Before. Oh, that's how I was too. Yeah, I was like, I, yeah, I was very skeptical. Yeah, it's like, you know, can you really help me? Um, he did a very comprehensive examination. I, I did that first um, week of intensive therapy where for three to four hours a day, spent time with Dr. Schmo or um, Dr. Cassie, Dr. Eric, to have them observe me, how my eye movements were, um, my, my balance. They were able to use non-invasive methods and within the first two days, one of the um, problems that I had going in um, was with my language and my speech. I wasn't fluid. Well, within the first two days, my stuttering stopped, which was like, oh my gosh, I've been doing this for, you know, well over a year. And all of a sudden I can speak again without getting completely tongue tied um, and, and coming out with, you know, a syllable at a time mm -hmm. with words. Um, and anyone who's gone through that bit knows <laughs> what I'm talking about. Um, it's very frustrating because you know what you want to say. It's just not being produced. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyways, so that was, that was amazing. That was my aha. I think I'm at the right place finally, you know. And for the first time, I had a doctor that was able to tell me what was wrong with me. Right. You know? mm -hmm. And that things weren't broken. It's just that my circuits needed to be recalibrated through, um, through the therapies, rehabilitation, the non-invasive methods that they do, um, the tongue skim, the art machine, and these are things that you Love probably art. know about. <laughs> yeah. um, the cold laser, you know. Um, and they were able to balance in my um, sessions, you know, pushing me a little with doing visual rehab. And what happens for me is any overstimulation um, manifests itself in a headache. And I just, um, I start shutting down. Well, they're able to be there, see that and do something about it immediately, which is amazing. Um, because in real life, when that happens, I'm done for the day. So, they're able to really fine tune what's going on because of that one-on-one -on -one work that they do um, with, with me and with their other patients. So I, I'm amazed. Mm -hmm. um, I've, it's been two months and I, I finally feel like there's hope with healing. And I have to say that's one of the things that, that gets me every time I go into that office is the slogan on the door. And it's also on their website, There Is Hope. To me, it's that visual reminder that I'm in the right place for healing. And to me, that's the biggest thing is for anyone, make sure you're seeing the right kind of doctor. You know, it, it, it took a while to find Dr. Shmo. Um, I saw the online, uh, the podcast that you had with him, Amy, 
um, after doing some research because I wasn't getting any help, looked further, found your book, found the podcast for the Brain Summit, and being in the Twin Cities, realized, okay, that's, that's an option for me. So I reached out. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So it just, it's been a journey and it's, it's, it'll continue for quite some time. Um, TBI certainly don't heal overnight, um, but you just have to hang in there. Yeah. So, and, I bet the you know, now. and I think too, like I had my set of symptoms, you had your set of symptoms, you know, we might've had some overlap in what you and I, what our mm -hmm. symptoms were. But my point is that, that in functional neurology, they look at your whole picture. They don't treat you just like the every other person with a brain injury. Right. It's based on you specifically and what's happening. And like you said, there are, you know, you work with them three, four hours a day for five days a week. And so they're able to observe and, okay, if she does this, she starts doing that. So what right. can we do to stop that? Exactly. And, you know, it's like, I've never experienced another doctor who, who does that. And even in PT, you know, PT, you're still only going, you might, you might go five days a week, but you're only going one time a day. You know, so right. they're not seeing you as you fatigue throughout the day, because that's important. It's key. It's key mm -hmm. because it's what triggers and, and yeah. And because of it, they're able to, like you said, observe that, you know, and, and then do something about it. And, and through that information, they're able to fine tune their approach. Um, because what may work for one person may not work for another. And it doesn't matter, you know, how serious the TBI is. It just, everyone's different with the way that they heal and their body responds to treatment. So mm -hmm. it's, um, it's been amazing for me and and I never would have known about functional neurology you know I think one of the biggest um, the biggest gap is that the medical community doesn't necessarily know about it you know I, I've saw multiple neurologists in the area I was down at Mayo um, some multiple re, you know TBI rehabilitation specialists all wonderful people but it's just I feel like there needs to be a bridging in that awareness of, you know, okay, if a person isn't getting better, let's take it a step further or refer them out to maybe, you know, a different area versus having the patient have to do that. You know, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure about you, Amy, but I was trying to do research when I, I couldn't even think straight. I, mean, I would have trouble crossing the street making that decision. Yeah. Never mind trying to find the right doctor for myself. You know, it, it just, it's like to have it be the patient's job. I, you hear about patient advocacy, et cetera, but it's even still, there needs to be an awareness made um, because I know I'm not alone with my TBI and, and reading your book was, it was very comforting and validating with, oh my God, someone else is going through this. Yeah. <laughs> Because trying to explain it to people is tough. And you have friends and family look at you and like, oh, you look great. Oh, you're, you're speaking well. And it's like tip of the iceberg. <laughs> that's, that's what you see. There is so much mix up in here. And the challenges we have on a day-to-day -day basis and just processing and, and doing things is tough. So it is. And, you know, you talked about being skeptical. And I know when, so Jeremy actually reached out to me because he'd been reading some of my HuffPost pieces and realized I was local. And, you know, I was like, oh, okay, that's nice, you know. And I ignored him for like a month. <laughs> and he was like, seriously, just come in for a consultation. Mm -hmm. And so I went in for my first appointment and he spent two hours examining. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I had never had a doctor spend more than about 20 minutes with me. Right. And I, I was like, wow. <laughs> and one of the very first things he said to me was that it was my eyes. And that's what I'd been complaining about, the dizziness coming from my eyes. And nobody mm -hmm. listened to me. <laughs> you know, and to finally have a doctor just validate everything right. you're feeling, you know, oh, gosh, I'm not crazy. Mm -hmm. And, 
you know, like, like I think you were saying, you know, you're not better. You're not, you're not, you're not totally recovered, Mm -hmm. but you're much better. And it's all about getting a quality of life back. You know, I might not ever get back to a hundred, but I might be able to get to 85 or 90. Right. Right. Exactly. And when you've been living at 30, Mm-hmm. For two and a half years, even get to fifty percent was like life changing to get back. Oh, it is. It it really is. It really is. I mean, it. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, it, you see these small victories, and you learn to appreciate them. Um, but yeah, it's it's been amazing just the turnaround in in seeing the right kind of doctor to help me with my brain function. Um, and, and also help to educate me, although I can't necessarily articulate it right now with everything, but educate me on what was going on in my brain, why I had issues, etc. I mean, I had neurologists before, medical neurologists say, you know, well, your headache, you have a headache because your brain's lost around. It, it, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, and then you want to say, well, how about all these other symptoms? And yeah, you know, it, it's because you hit your head, which the, I knew that there had to be more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, and just needed to seek out the right kind of help. So, and you talked about bridging the gap, and that's kind of my theme. I'm, I'm doing a few keynotes this month in March. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's sort of my theme because I'm in front of a heavily um, uh, healthcare professional. It's it's mostly healthcare professionals as well as survivors and caregivers. But mm-hmm. I feel like I have that opportunity to try to help bridge that gap mm-hmm. with give t- sharing my story, you yeah. know, and, and not to tear down any particular doctor I went to. Um, However, there's a lot of room for improvement. Uh-huh. And if they know that these things exist, they can refer or they can get the training themselves to help elevate right. them as a professional. You know, there's, yeah. it's just, there's so many opportunities here. And I feel like, you know, we're learning more and more and more every day about brain injury and concussion and being able to bridge that gap as an advocate, I think is just, it's so powerful and it'll help so many people. In exactly. Exactly. And, you know, and help so many people in finding the right kind of care, finding that kind of care sooner mm-hmm. and hope, hopefully costing insurance companies a little less. <laughs> So, um, yeah, the number that I, I provided was um, the $111,000 was before I started seeing Dr. Schmo. Now, with the injury and all, I'm sure that the course would have initially been the same. See, your, you know, urgent care, PCP, neurologist, but there was probably a point in time where the, one of the doctors would have identified, you know, you don't have anything um, that show, I didn't have anything go, showing up on scans, MRI right. scans, et cetera. Examinations, you know, there were some subtleties here and there. There were the symptoms that I kept talking about, you know, and hopefully a doctor will be able to take that information and say, I can't necessarily help you, but let me direct you to someone who can, you know, a functional neurologist who'll look at the whole body and do the type of assessment that Dr. Shimon his team did um, to be able to identify what was going on and then be, come up with an approach to um, start my healing journey. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and helping people find the right doctor sooner, you know, like you said, you might have still gone to the emergency room and that's a whole other story of, you know, the emergency room, they're just ruling out that you're not dying, basically. Yeah. Exactly. That was very true. <laughs> that's all they kind of care about the emergency room. Yeah. And, you know, they do a very good job at keeping people from dying. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're not dying, they send you home and you know, might tell you to follow up with your doctor and, yeah. you know, but, but even still, you know, I think if the emergency room can be equipped with resources as well, right. We send people home, 
with like here, here's, here's some doctors you might be interested in seeing. Cause uh -huh. I just wonder, you know, I was two and a half years out and you were a year and a half out. Like how different my recovery might've been if I'd have found Schmo a few weeks or Sooner. Few months. Yeah. 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 I know that's, that's a question that we will never have the answer I to. I know. And you know, that's, so. and, and I really believe my path took me where it did because yeah. I mean, this is what we're doing today. So exactly. You no, know. exactly. Yes. It's, it's, um, it's been quite the journey and, and because you shared your story, it's, it's really opening up doors, you know, for people to, um, find other alternative, um, uh, ways of healing or doctors to, you know, to help with their situation. So, yeah. um, and I, I love that it's like a full circle moment. You know, you found me, you found the summit, then you found Dr. Schmo and then yeah. I love it. Yes. The power yes. of the internet. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So Diane, um, is there any final thoughts that you have or any advice that you have for other survivors watching this? Um, Yes, you know, first of all, the, the hardest thing for me was to just try to be patient. Healing from a TBI is, it takes a long time. It's a marathon. <laughs> I have got to remind myself on a daily basis because I get frustrated, especially yeah. when you start feeling better. You're like, oh, I can do this, I can do that. You do it, and then you're bam, right back yeah. down. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, for me, it, it like, for example, just real life, going to a store, I, I always go to a store with someone because it takes just one split second for a situation for me to shut down. My daughter was with me once when we went to Petco to get some food for my dog. <laughs> and it was adoption day and some um, child had decided to make all the dogs that were being adopted bark at once. I was like, oh, yay. I just froze. And luckily my daughter um, is very familiar with what happens to me. And she said, mom, just give me the list, go sit in the car, you know? Yeah. So it just, things happen that quickly. It's that overstimulation, whether it be lights mm -hmm. or noise or, or just people and conversations. Um, the other thing is, is be curious and try to stay informed. I found you through the internet through looking, looking online. Um, I had a doctor 15 months into it say, you know what, Diane, this is as good as it gets. Get used to the fact that you've got this ongoing headache and these challenges. That wasn't good enough for me. I, I knew I was progressing even just incrementally. And I went online, looked up information, found you, found your book, um, Living with a Traumatic Brain Injury, read it, cried. <laughs> it's like, yeah, here's someone else. Um, and then, you know, did a little more research from the podcast. Dr. Schmo led me to MFNC. So keep, keep trying. There is hope out there. Um, it, it's not easy, but just, just keep trying and, and realize that you're not alone. Yeah. And, and I'm just going to also add, if anyone is seeking, you know, resources in their area, um, if you're looking for functional neurology, you can definitely contact Jeremy's office. They will be more than happy to help you. I also have a resource list um, on facesoftbi.com and also the Brain Injury Association of America. They're wonderful, you know, if you need resources beyond a doctor. Um, mm -hmm. Contact them. They have an 800 number on their website. It's BIAUSA.org. Um, definitely reach out to them. They have a dedicated call center. So um, there, there's definitely options out there. You're not alone. And, you know, just don't give up. They're, like right. like said earlier, there's always hope. Right. So, Diane, thank you so much for being a part of the summit. This has just been wonderful. And like I said, it's so cool to see it come full circle like that. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And I just, you know, shout out to my husband and my family who have been supportive and continue to support me in this journey. Um, 
the doctors at MFNC who, who are truly making a difference for me now. And Amy, thank you to you and everything that you're doing with your advocacy and awareness. It's, it's making a difference in lives like mine. Thank you, I appreciate that. And thank you everyone for watching. I hope you've really enjoyed this episode of the summit. And just a reminder, each weekday during the summit, you're going to get your email with a link to that day's presentation. And they're available for 24 hours each day. And if you're not able to catch all the live presentations, you can purchase the recording for just $29. You get all, all of the recordings, you get immediate access, and proceeds do go to the Brain Injury Association of America. So thank you everyone, and we'll see you in the next episode.